look at good clinical practice through the lens of ISO and ICH. So we know that there have been updates to ICH E6 GCP that came out in November. So one of the things that we have seen change within that update is information about a risk-based approach, which is very interesting to balance that against ISO 14155, which requires that risk evaluation, which we'll talk about. So what we'll talk about today, look at the purpose and governing bodies of ISO and ICH. We'll look at the core principles of each document, look at similarities and differences in content and approach, and look at some additional sources of information for compliant oversight of medical device studies. Now, ISO 14155 is a, a licensed product, so that's not something we're going to be able to share with you, um, obviously, in its entirety. We're going to talk about some of those, those high-level commonalities and, and key differences, but of course, that is something that, that needs to be purchased. But what we do want to talk about is the purpose of that document, ISO 14155. So ISO, of course, is a worldwide federation of national standards bodies, and the U.S. is a member. Um, we are looking at ISO 14155 2011. So we used to have parts one and two. But those were consolidated in 2011 and adopted as an American national standard. So it's one approach because ICH is written for drugs, pharmaceuticals. We look at ISO 14155 to supplement that good clinical practice approach. So the clinical investigation of medical devices for human subjects, good clinical practice is the proper title there for ISO 14155. So we're going to look at ISO 14155 and use it to understand the approach for conducting that clinical trial of a medical device, particular to those medical devices. So it looks at good clinical practice for designing, conducting, recording, and reporting those clinical investigations of that investigational device carried out in the human subject population. And of course, we're seeing this with ICH as well, for, uh, particularly for those pharmaceuticals. So there are general requirements within ISO 14155 for protection of the rights, safety, and well-being of those human subjects, which of course is our goal in clinical research. Making sure that that study is conducted scientifically and that we can rely on the results, that they are credible. It talks about the responsibilities of the sponsor and the principal investigator. And as we'll see, and I'm sure you're aware, ICH E6 GCP, including revision two that we're going to talk about, includes information in addition to this about the ethics committees and those expectations for the ethics committees, which ISO does not. We'll look at the responsibilities of um, how we use this tool, how sponsors and investigators and, and ethics committees, regulatory bodies, et cetera, can use this tool to better ensure they get quality data from protected subjects. So one thing that ISO pulls out are those ethical considerations. Of course, ICH does as well, but a bit differently. Of course, there are similarities as well. So ISO talks about clinical investigations need to be conducted in accordance with the ethical principles that have their origin in the Declaration of Helsinki, which is the first principle we see in ICH E6 looking at the protection of rights, safety, and well-being of subjects, the most important considerations of science and society, also one of our 13 principles of ICH E6 GCP. The principles need to be understood, observed, and applied at every step in the clinical investigation. So ICH talks about having quality built in, having systems that ensure quality of every aspect of the study. One thing that gets fleshed out a little bit more in ISO that we don't see in ICH as much is improper influence or inducement. ICH tells us that we have to have no coercion or undue influence to have that subject enroll or continue participation in the study, but ISO goes a little further. It says that the sponsor shall avoid improper influence on or inducement of the subject, the monitor, and investigators or other parties who are participating in or contributing to that clinical investigation. And each investigator needs to make sure that they are not improperly influencing or inducing that subject or the sponsor, monitor, or other investigators or other parties 